So I can have you picture in picture and I can have even split screen. So I have my notes, I have my Nosby uh, and I have you on FaceTime and it's all happening on one iPad Pro. And you're saying this is not a proper computer. A few. Well, you know, <laughs> you know what also can handle even more than three windows at the time? A Macintosh. Hello, I'm Radek. I'm Michael. And this is the podcast. A sounding board for interesting ideas and insights. We discuss books we read I want to share with you. As well as technology and productivity, which is what we do by day working on our app, Nosby. Or whatever else comes to mind. So we're back to books again, and this is going to be, uh, I think, rather unusual because you insisted on discussing this a book I have not read. Yeah. So the reason is simple. Uh, this book is about simplicity. It's about Steve Jobs. And um, it just ties very well, I think. Well, we'll discuss and we'll see if it really does tie that well with the previous episode's talk on productivity mm-hmm. and with uh, our previous uh, discussions on deep work, essentialism, the one thing and all these, you know, uh, focus. So it's it, like... Because we recorded yesterday, actually, and we're yes. recording today again uh, because we're catching up um, after my vacation um, and Easter vacation and whatever. So um, it just like after yesterday's re- recording, this book just popped up as as, as something that that just ties in perfectly for me. So I wanted to you know, and I'll uh, will put a link in the show notes to my notes from this book, so uh, you can check it out already. Yeah, yeah. I, I only read your your notes, which is which is great. That's like one of a uh, few books for which you have uh, notes published online. Uh, yeah, which is what I, I I try to encourage you to do more of. Exactly. Yeah, I try to encourage myself to do more of that as well. Yeah. So, uh, and it's really useful because now when I was getting back to this book, when I just read my notes, uh, you know, all of these examples from the book just you know appeared magically on in my head. So uh, yeah, it's a great, great, great reminder. Cool, cool. Okay, so um, the book we're talking about is uh, by uh, Ken Siegel, uh, and it's called Insanely Simple, The Obsession That Drives Apple's Success. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, the, the cool thing about the author of this book is that he actually worked with Steve Jobs because he, he is an ad executive and he has a very good blog, we'll link in the show notes, uh, which I keep reading. Um, and uh, he, yeah, so he worked with him. So it's not like, you know, he read something, you know, online and, and published a book about Steve Jobs because everybody did that. He, right. he worked with Steve Jobs. And he focused on, on, on this simplicity thing, on simplicity, on the simple stick that, uh, or shtick that uh, Steve Jobs um, was famous for. And uh, again, this was one of the books that when I read it, read it, I thought, well, there can't be nothing, anything new there. I've already, you know, read a few biographies of Steve Jobs, so it should be like pretty straightforward. But it wasn't. It was, uh, there was uh, like this focus on simplicity was very important. And I wanted to discuss this with you today, Radek, because um, uh, recently I found myself behaving a little bit like Steve Jobs <laughs> with people. And um, oh, <laughs> like like being a jerk to them? Yeah, but in a in a diff- like not really a jerk, like <laughs> kind of a jerk. And 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 yeah, and that's why I wanted to talk to you about this because okay, it's okay. like I start behaving like a jerk when I don't mean to be a jerk. I just mean to be, you know, to go straight to the point. Mm-hmm. So, so let me give you a story. Um uh, Steve Jobs, uh, in this book, there was there were a few stories of him, and th- the, the idea was that he he embraced simplicity in everything, not just mm-hmm. the product design, which, which is famous, like like you know the click wheel of the iPod, you know all these you know simple things like the home the home button of the iPhone, but also the way he communicated things with people. So he would because he cared so much for simplicity, and it was he wouldn't want to waste time. On the, like, on on the noise, right? Mm-hmm. He would just focus on the signal, right? So, for example, somebody would tell him something, and he would just say, "This is shit," and he would say that because, although he would he could have said, "You know, uh, I respect your opinion. I think you did a great job there," but you know, in my humble opinion, I would like he would just skip all that. He would just go straight to the point, mm-hmm. and for many people this would be offensive or this would be um, just too direct, right? This would be right. too, 
you know, straightforward. Uh, and and this would offend them because, you know, they, they, they for example, spent lots of time building something and then they, he, he would just outright criticize this. And and f- from what the author is saying, that he, he was criticizing that, because, but, he, but he wasn't criticizing the person. He was criticizing the, the thing, you know, the, 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 the design. And then he would tell them why, right? Uh, it was, you know, shit. So he would focus on that. But but he would be really too straightforward. Mm-hmm. And the, the question is, um, you know, like, and, of, and of course, uh, the problem is that um, with such simplicity, uh, the, 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 you know, this, this, you know, we're not used to this kind of, you know, communication. But what I found out recently is that when I was, um, you know, focusing on my essential intent, on, on, on what I should focus on, on our, you know, Nosby, on the future of Nosby, on, 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 on my blog, on the things that I want to just, you know, relentlessly like make them better. Um, I realized that very often when people come to me with um, with some requests or some things that I know that are noise and are not in line with what I want want to do, I instinctively almost want to tell them, you know, <laughs> just go away, right? <laughs> Instead of you know, um, uh, you know what I'm saying? I like I I like yeah. I, I, I start start to begin to lose. Like not to lose patience, but to not to have patience to do the kind, nice thingy. But I would just tell to them, you know, outright, okay, I don't want that. Thank you. That's great. But I want to just do that, and that's it. So, and this is, and and I found I found myself in a few situations like this recently, and I saw that it sounded harsh. <laughs> yeah, th- that's my problem. Or strength depending on on the on the context i guess uh, which is that i i have very low tolerance for for bullshit and i'm i'm just uh naturally inclined to to just say it uh, like if like, like steve jobs if i don't think something is good i'm just going to say it um uh, right and and i i uh, you have to be careful with that to to make sure that that the in, intent is is clear to the other person that you're 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 just discussing, say, a design, like when you're working on on a product at at work, and and not criticizing them, right? Yeah, um, there was there was a great example um, in this book. Uh, one of the you know one of the takeaways from this book is like um, uh, it's think small, so small groups of smart of smart people. Yeah. So he was trying to have this small group of smart people around him, they would have this report that they would be able to just say these things. And I think kind of, it's kind of what we have um, uh, in, in our company when we have our design fight, which we yeah. uh, discussed earlier, that uh, that within this group, we can just skip things and we just can say things out loud and, and people can say things to me, although I'm the boss and I can say things to them and it doesn't mean I'm going to fire them. So, <laughs> so we can really just be very frank with each other. And I really appreciate that because I think it cuts a lot of time from our meetings and it really, you know, makes us more laser focused, right? Yeah, yeah I agree. I think I think the the biggest, uh, the, the key to making it work is creating a, a culture, nurturing a, a culture in an organization that allows this and celebrates celebrates this uh, because I I have a sense that that's naturally kind of the the, the assumption in our our, our culture more broadly is that you're you're not like that you 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 do hide um, behind this this um, kind of curtain of um, politeness right and even if you uh, disagree you're going to communicate it in a very weak way uh, because you 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 don't want the uh, you don't want to communicate a, an, an intent of like you attacking another person, per, like like someone personally. Um, uh, but but this is this is um, quite unproductive. Like if if you want to collaborate closely and uh, like in the context of of Steve Jobs, like working on on products, like you you can't you know allow a situation where politeness keeps you from uh, from just telling the truth out loud um, or, you know, your your strong opinion and then uh, have it discussed. So 
you know, it's one thing that on a personal level you have to learn how to control it, and on on one hand be direct, and on the other hand uh, be careful not to come off as too harsh. But but I think you just like if you want to communicate in this way, you have to create an environment where this is possible. Yeah, and um, there's a great story in this in this book that uh, explains when he took the time to to actually uh, communicate his way of thinking to the ad company that was he was working with because um uh, there was a story that um he he showed up on a on a um like on a meeting and a briefing and they had um so they they were supposed to create a, a series of ads for something and they they didn't have a good idea but they but they called the meeting anyway because you know it was supposed to happen anyway so everybody came there and they showed him a few of ideas a few of their ideas mm-hmm. but they were not really convinced convinced that they were good ideas but you know they had they, want, they wanted to show him something and and in a normal environment you know this is fine the, the exec says you know let's think about it you know like it, and Steve Jobs just saw it he looked at it and he was like no this is this is this is total crap and he just left right and they just were like left floored they didn't know what to do you know he like did he fire us or not or what to do but anyway next week for next week, they prepared another series of, of, of proposals, but a lot better. Uh, like they, they 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 found out you know what they were trying to 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 um to do, and they prepared a series of proposals, and they they called the meeting again. Uh, he showed up again, and before the meeting, he said, "Okay, guys, before we start, before we start, I want to just explain what happened last week. Last week, you showed me something that was shit." And you knew it was bad. I knew it was bad. Everybody knew it was bad. But you still showed me anyway. I don't tolerate this. I don't want this to happen anymore. If you don't have anything, let's just call it and and go home. But don't waste my time. And this way, he explained his rationale, his way of thinking, his way of acting. And I think, you know, he set expectations and then... As you, as, as you said, then uh, he created, uh, they, they understood the relationship and they, they understood what they can show to him and they, and, and that they only sh- can show him stuff that they really believe in or otherwise they just sh- should show nothing at all. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's pretty good, right? I mean, perhaps he, he should have um, explained it right away and, and not a, exactly. a, a week later, but, but that's... Um, that makes a lot of sense because, as as you said, he he said the expectations that um, they're they're here to to discuss real stuff. Like they're supposed to make a great product and not and not uh, just make a meeting to make a meeting to try to impress him with uh, them doing work, busy work, I, I, right? Right, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah, and and, and when I when I, when I the funny thing is when I told the story to my wife, um, and then because uh, I really liked the story, and I told it to my wife, and um, next time we were supposed to watch a movie, and I was um, I I was browsing through iTunes to rent a movie, and I didn't find anything really like I really wanted to watch, mm-hmm. but I was like, honey, maybe let's watch this one or maybe this one, and she was like. You know that we want. We don't want to watch these movies. So I, why are you wasting my time? <laughs> so she just, she just That's good. used the story in my face. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is that, uh, as, as, as you said, um, what we don't want ultimately is create a mediocre product just because we agree to something because we want to be nice to somebody or we want to please somebody. Mm-hmm. Right, we don't want the situation when when you propose something. For example, I don't like it, um, and I uh, and I think it's bad. And instead of you know fighting with you to find a better solution, I'm like, yeah, but you wanted that, so let's put it, let's just put it there because because you know I don't want to hurt your feelings. You know, th- this for me is toxic. This for me is not getting things done. Right. Yeah, I I was I I mentioned before that that you have to create an environment for this. Um, and I, I was just browsing through my my book notes because I I, I was trying to to find the the book in, in which I uh, something like like this was discussed and and that was one of the chapters in uh, Smarter Faster Better uh, yeah and the idea is that um, the two norms like the the two kind of unspoken rules the the pieces of um, uh, team dynamics that are are necessary for for this to work 
is um, first of all uh, kind of psychological safety. Like you, you have to uh, feel safe expressing your opinion, and that's a consequence of um, you know uh, respecting everybody else's. So like if uh, it, it, it's it's not the point by by itself to to have like team cohesion to be like nice to each other. Um, what like you you do want uh, to fight like because like you're trying to figure something out. But but for for this to happen, everybody needs to feel psychologically safe in expressing uh, uh, where they stand. And 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 the 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 other thing and and that's what what I, I guess allows the the first one is. Um, is, is empathy, just kind of learning, uh, you know, trying to be sensitive uh, to how others on the team feel, uh, you know, to kind of notice um, when you're, uh, when, when something you, you, you say can, you know, was, was taken the, the wrong way and then correct to reassure that, you know, you're, you're not offending the person, you're, you're just, uh, you're just freely expressing what you think, because you're you're trying to get to the the best kind of final uh, and to 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 the best end end result you you can achieve. Yeah, I just you know I just uh, recently discovered that um, that because I'm <laughs> I'm trying to simplify my life and simplify and more more you know focus and you know more like make it just more meaningful in this way, and uh, I I I caught myself a few times. When I realized that I was just, <laughs> I was taking a shortcut, you know, I was I was trying to 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 quickly say, you know, react to something instead of first establishing this report, you know, first establishing this 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 this, this relationship, and um, but as you said, you know, it's 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 good that when you realize that you have to just correct the course, right? You have to just you know. Um, just recently, uh, because we are here for the Easter break, and I'm I'm at my at my mom's place uh, with the whole family, I I recently just said something to my mom, and then she she felt hurt, and I was like, why would she have feel hurt? I just and then I realized, ah, I took a shortcut. <laughs> I just said it to you know, I just went straight to the point, mm-hmm. without realizing her feelings, you know, and and um, yeah, so I had to <laughs> remedy this. <laughs> I didn't want to hurt my mom. I just you know, I just yeah you know, yeah. Yeah, em- em- empathy is nice. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's it's going to be difficult if you're if you're this direct uh, all the time. I think it it makes more sense to to appreciate that. For example, like you're at work and we have this environment that allows this, and then you're always direct all the time unless you notice that. He was taken the wrong way, but like when you're outside of this environment where where, where you know for a fact that people, you know, get it that it, this is just like a, b- a better, more efficient way to communicate as long as you understand and that like we still respect each other. Uh, outside of of that group, like when you're when you're speaking to to mere mortals, you probably should should uh, follow the <laughs> the usual uh, kind of politeness uh, standards. Yeah, totally. Well, anyway, so so that was one of the one of the concepts from the book, and um, well, there were there were more, and uh, I wanted to focus on 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 also editing, because uh, uh, like um, uh, just recently, I, I I was giving I was giving a few a few um, presentations, and whenever I, I'm doing a presentation and, and webinars, and when I when I do them, I uh, I really appreciate this this thing of of trying to simplify each slide and simplify each each you know each um each thing i want to say and mm-hmm. uh, because steve jobs was very famous for when he was doing his keynote speeches that his slide would be basically um, like what he was showing and then maybe one you know sentence on or one word you know very very simple very to the yeah. point and um there there was a, there was a phrase um in this book that uh, uh you know uh, Words are powerful, but more words are not more powerful. <laughs> you know yeah. that uh, you know less is more, and everything. And so, what I do first when I create a presentation for a webinar, like or for a you know keynote speech or whatever, what I do is um, I first create a mind map, and in this mind map, I describe the things I want to discuss. But later, I edit them to make you know the shortest versions possible. 
mm-hmm. and it's a great way to to realize if if the concept stands the the, the test of time and, and and if it really makes sense to transmit because mm-hmm. if i cannot if i cannot edit it down it it might think that the the thing is too ambiguous or too just complicated or too complex to just transmit to people so i should focus on something else or i should just divide it into smaller pieces uh, because uh and, and and this was really uh, highlighted in this book that that really Steve Jobs was always trying to capture with each slide the essence of what he wanted to to convey. You know, really really make things simple, make things digestible, make things impactful. Because a short, uh, a, a, like f- short uh, impact, short you know sentence, short you know a, a, just one you know I don't know picture image was more powerful than just you know a, a whole deck of different you know PowerPoint slides. But it takes time. It it's uh, oh yes. It, it takes a lot of work to to edit something out like that. Um, I would have written you a shortened letter if I had more time. Right. Uh, whoever <laughs> said, said that, I I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I notice it very painfully when uh, we had the Denos reunion three weeks back, and I did my uh, presentation, and I. I I, I did not have the time to edit it out. I did not have the proper time to prepare. I just made the slides and then I went with the flow. And <laughs> well, the result was that it, it took a lot of time and it, it just was way too long, way too boring. Uh, by contrast, like when I would make a, a technical presentation on a conference or something, then it's just like 20 minutes and it's like, Pretty much every word is precisely the word I, I planned to say and nothing else. Yeah, to be honest, I was a little bit disappointed with your presentation. I, it I was no, I was very it, disappointed with myself. It wasn't it wasn't you, right? I mean, because I remember you on different, you know, like really to everyone listening. When we went to London and you had the presentation in London, we were in the same room in London in our hotel. Yeah. So what happened was that you would you would force me to listen to your presentation like three or four times because you were so relentless about um, you know repeating about trying about preparing and you know doing really a good job. So uh, and 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 and, uh, and this time you <laughs> it was obvious you were not very prepared. So yeah. uh, it was uh, yeah. It was it was a difference. Uh, there was a big difference between the presentation that you delivered on our um, reunion, and um, uh, and the one the one before that I witnessed. So shame on yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> I know, I know, but it, it's just it just shows how 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 much time it takes. Like I, I I'm I'm incapable of of uh, of just just doing it. It it's uh, it takes time, right? Uh, but 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 that makes sense. Like as a as a writer or presenter, whatever. Um, but, but as a writer, it's kind of your responsibility to like invest your time to, uh, to make something more impactful and, and not waste time of the reader or listener, right? Yeah, the last, last webinar that we had about um, the, the additional tri- tip, tips and tricks uh, for productivity for 10 steps, um, like of my 10 steps course, I, I thought, you know, because I know all this stuff, it's going to be take me just a few minutes, you know, maybe one hour, two hour tops, I'm going to have the presentation ready. It took me two days mm-hmm. to prepare the presentation, two days. And and I went through it like, I don't know how many how many times. But yeah, as you said, to do it right, you just have to just work a lot to to, to go to the, to the essence. But then the delivery is great and then you get great feedback. So it really, it's really worth it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I, I don't speak on conferences and meetups very often. And especially uh, this year, I have like nothing planned so far uh, compared to last year where there was a lot. Uh, and, and when I do, I, I do the same thing on like a conference and a few meetups because I, I know I can do it. And I know that um, when, I, when I do do it, it, um, I, I don't think I'm, I'm that bad at it, but it's, it just takes a lot of my time and, you know, I, I don't, I don't get that much benefit from it, uh, aside from the fact that it's just fun to do. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult to, to, to justify it because I, I don't want to, to do it and, and do a crappy job at it. Uh, if I'm, if I'm not going to put in the work, then it's better to not do it at all. Yeah. Yeah, so the last thing I wanted to discuss uh, from this book and, and something that struck home for me recently is that was that um, 
our company is growing and we are, you know, 20 something people, 23 now, I think now, plus contractors, so like more than 30 now. Uh, so we're getting bigger and um, we're not on a hiring spree or anything, but we're just a bigger company. And I still want to, you know, run it pretty small and pretty casual and pretty, you know, um, uh, without so much, you know, hierarchy, without so much, you know, uh, the boss, the manager, the, 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 the manager of manager or whatever. Like, and it's 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 great and we are trying to do that and i think we are succeeding when like when we have our design fight team we have our directors team right now so we're trying to build these teams to 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 make sure that like to make sure that we don't that up as a, as a company with with too much overhead you know because yeah. uh, because like on one hand i i see that we can do that but on the other hand i see that people um, kind of i don't know somehow somehow strive for this uh, hierarchy for this like they should know who's the boss, who's 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 responsible for what. So yeah. it's you know it's it's like a constant struggle to 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 yes to to put responsibility where it should be, but then not create overhead. You know, yeah, it, it's it's actually quite uh, strange to me to 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 see that that uh, that people want this hierarchy. Right. And I'm like, no, stop! It's so much fun. Don't break this. Uh, and, and and like honestly. It's um, like uh, w- one of the, the things I, I, I saw in your in your notes is the idea of working in small teams of really smart people, and and that's just the the the, the best feeling in, in the world. Like uh, when when you work on something and there's just like a very small team and like everybody is is like top of the, of of their game and like you you don't need you don't need a manager you you don't like you just collaborate very closely. And it's like so incredibly efficient, and it like sometimes you you get surprised when you uh, stumble upon the the right project with with the the right group of like you know three people or something, and it's it's just you do great work in a very little time because you have zero overhead. Yeah, I this was one one, my, one of my discoveries um, uh, uh, last year when like I finally involved. Like our heads of support of you know programming you know our, our CTO like our heads into our like small directors team directors meeting, and I realized I can offload lots of my responsibilities to our group you know to, to decide together things, and mm-hmm. and so, suddenly this meeting which was previously a status meeting what's happening with support what's happening in the technology what's happening in marketing became like a like a like a similar to what we have in the side fight. So like a group of like-minded people thinking how to steer the company forward, you know, how to move mm-hmm. the company forward. And and it the, the meeting was more fun. And for me, it was like more relaxing that I could like if I didn't know something, uh, I would just tell them, guys, we have this problem. I have no clue how to solve it. I have some idea, but maybe you have other ideas. Let's let's try to solve it together. And then suddenly it was just, you know, better. As you said, it was just, you know, working with, with a smart, you know, small group of smart people just f- solved this for me and and took the burden out of my, you know, shoulders. And on the other hand, um, I realized, you know, I have these guys here. Let's just, you know, work this together just in a very similar way. So for me, you know, it, it's 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 a great feeling. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, like ending this show and, and talking about simplicity, I think... I really liked this book, and I recommend you read it anyway. Um, okay, yeah. I I, w- I wish I had I had more insights to to share, but I need to re- read this first. Yeah, so so I really uh, recommend you you do that because, um, and maybe when you do, then we'll come back to to to, f- to some other insights because it's been quite a while um, since I read it. So, um, but like the simplicity matters. I really like like less is sometimes. Less is very often better. Not always. Sometimes less is just less, but mm-hmm. but usually less is better. And and especially the simplicity, but not simplicity for simplicity's sake, but simplicity to really go direct to the point. And like, well, whenever we speak about productivity, we try to remove the barriers of entry, remove the 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 obstacles. No, like you always recommend that we should learn at the shortcuts. Like for example, the shortcut to with Nosby to shortcut to to add a task to Nosby from any app uh, on a Mac because you designed it and you love it. But mm-hmm. but the fact the fact that we should remove the obstacles 
the barriers of entry to do something. And with the simplicity, as you said, if we bring people on board and if we bring ourselves on board and try to remove the obstacles and and, and, and talk more direct about things and allow our, ourselves to, to attack the problems directly and not just beat around the bush, yeah, we can get so much more done. It's just, I think it's one of also one of these productivity, you know, insights that recently I just discovered. Cool, cool. So are we just going to make this simple, short to the point show and end it here? 